many traders count on professionals like me. You know, and I, you know, share analysis and I share ideas. And I always like to also share my mistakes because I really feel like people can really learn from my mistakes. But all of that and all of that information out there and everything that I and everybody shares, I mean, this it can create a huge trap. And that trap is that traders rely on the information from somewhere else. There's, they don't take ownership of trades. And I can hear that in some emails that come to me and uh, you know other discussions that I have with people that I work with. Uh, and they um, you know put on a, a trade that somebody else gave them the cue for. And then it's like, well, what's next? What do I do? Um, uh, I, I got this idea from this you know other person, um, but it was their idea. Now exactly how do I handle this trade? Where do I get out? How much profit potential should I be looking at? All of those questions. And then the person is kind of stuck, the trader, right? Because they've got a trade on that's not theirs. They didn't really research it. They didn't look at it a whole lot. They just believed the professional out there or the person that they uh, respected uh, and said that that probably, well, they liked it, they're a professional, it's probably pretty good odds that it's going to be a good trade. Well, often it's not. And there's often psychology behind the fact that um, a trader will rely elsewhere uh, and not make their own decisions. I'm going to give you a brief little story here of a, a, a woman I worked with in trading. And uh, we did a lot of processing to work through this. I'm going to make it really simple on you. And through the processing, she took me back in time to uh, tell me a story that really led to me understanding about where the reliance came on other professionals in trading and why there was she relied less on herself. The story really goes that um, when she was young, she got old enough to go to the store and shop on her own. Um, she wanted to buy some blouses and her mother said to her, you know, okay, you can go shopping and buy some blouses and you can only have one blouse, but I want you to bring back three blouses. Pick out three that you like and bring them here and we're going to return two of them. And you can keep one, the one that I decide is the best for you. So her whole life, she carried that, you know, thought, boy, my mom, you know, really wants to take care of me. She let me do things on my own. But the psychology behind it was that she couldn't make decisions on her own. She needed to really rely on her mother for the final decision. And that brought her to a place of a low confidence and to a place of, of believing because the first time she went shopping on her own and she brought something her mom didn't like, her mom made her return it. So, you know, she believed that mistakes are risky. She would then feel badly about herself. So confidence low, um, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of negative self-talk, and became very dependent on other people's decision making, not reliant on her own decision making. So you can see how as a young girl, those, you know, what she learned about a, a negative sense of self carried into her trading. And she really had to take some leaps of faith that she could make some decisions and be wrong and live through it and not, you know, and discard the shame or negative feelings that she had in order to be able to get through there and then be able to make trading decisions on her own. So that's a little piece of the psychology behind it. There may be some of that that you can think about in your history where there was a negative consequence to poor decisions and that might actually be contaminating your decision making in life, decision making as a trader. I don't want to go too deep on that, but just kind of keep it on the surface and maybe there's something in there for you. But what I want to do now is I want to go through what I consider to be the, the tips to help you um, uh, take responsibility for your own trades, for you to take ownership of your own trades. So I'm going to put up a couple slides. We're going to go through nine points in here. I think these are valuable tips. And uh, then uh, I think if you adopt these, think about them. Uh, even if you're um, you know, listening to me or other people out there, 
that you will then be able to hear information that comes uh, through all of this information overload, through all of the professionals that you may listen to, as you are you know, trying to learn. There's nothing wrong with learning from professionals. Um, um, but uh, still, there's an important aspect to this, that anything you hear, it's for ultimately for your success, it means that the trades have to be yours. And we're going to talk about that right now with nine tips that I'm going to give you around. Uh, tips to help uh, these um, to, to take ownership of your own trades. So the first thing is uh, you never do a trade because someone you respect says it's good or has the trade on. Pretty simple, huh? Well, sometimes that's hard, but instead, so in other words, you're hearing what other people are saying, make sure that you review the analysis of the trade. It must be confirmed by your work or rejected. This is a key to taking trade ownership and to success as a trader. So, in other words, uh, if if you if you hear some you know something that sounds like it could be a good trade, you have to go and start from scratch and do your work and and analyze it. If if it looks you know if it's a fit for you based on that, then you move forward on it. If you reject it, then that's perfectly fine too. It's not a fit for you, and even if that trade works well and you didn't take it, it is meaningless. It means that you took ownership on the trade, and that uh, you uh, are going to do the same moving forward and not be reliant on anybody's good or bad decisions. No matter the idea, choose the trading vehicle that is a best fit for your style, experience, market engagement, and risk tolerance. So, you know, let's say somebody says, you know, S&Ps are going to go down or the NASDAQ is going to go down and they trade um, futures. And Boy, you say, you know, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should trade the futures. But at the same time, you know that, you know, based on the size of your account, based on, you know, what your normal trading style is, uh, that you do better trading ETFs. You can control them better. Uh, and or you do something that is an option trade that has defined risk. Uh, whatever it is that keeps you in your own trading style is what you should do. So you're essentially going to not do what they say as far as the trading vehicle. You're going to make it fit into who you are as a trader. This is going to go a long way in giving you more confidence because if you start making a mistake by trading a vehicle that somebody else is suggesting rather than the, that which you know fits into your own style plan experience then uh, you're gonna lose confidence based on that and you're then you're gonna be saying well you know I can't listen to him or her who am I gonna listen to um, where am I gonna get my trading cues it's so important that you make the trade your own by making it fit in your own style with the right trading vehicle. Next is make sure the trading size fits into your plan. And that goes for doing it too big because somebody exudes tons of confidence about something and also doing it too small and saying, well, you know, I'm just going to do a one lot because it's his idea and we'll see what it is and then we'll see how he does it. All of that is just wishy-washy weakness where you're not being aggressive, not being assertive, being reliant on somebody else. Don't do it small because it's somebody else's idea. It's just going to set you up for trouble. The next thing we're going to look at is making sure the risk-reward analysis fits into your plan using technical analysis or a profit or the profit loss structure of the strategy. So what that means is that, you know, somebody, you know, gives you a trading idea, you know, you come onto my site and I say, well, you know, this particular stock looks bearish. We have one right now, FedEx, that we're on the short side. So what you have to do is make sure that um, uh, your that the risk reward analysis fits into your into using the technical analysis that you use. In other words, if if 
me being shorted uh, or saying it's a, a good probability it's going to move to the downside has just, uh, in your opinion, only a minor potential downside move and the potential for a bigger upside move, then you're going to reject it. So in other words, you're using your risk reward analysis. The same thing goes if, you know, somebody says, you know, they're doing a, a, a vertical spread and they're, they're selling a, a, an out of the money where they have a four to one risk reward probability of profitability. So they're probably selling a, a vertical spread with the short side around, uh, you know, between uh, tw 20 and 25 delta, something like that. And you say to yourself, I don't, you know, they're doing that, but uh, uh, to me, that's too far out of the money. I'm not getting the proper risk reward. Then you're going to reject it or you're going to make a different choice, but it's going to fit, has to fit into your profit loss structure of the strategy and it has to fit into your own risk reward analysis for the technical analysis that is making the trade your own so you're going to review those things you're not just going to do what somebody else says next one is be sure your analysis lets you know when you are wrong so that way you know I, when a professional says do this trade and you're not you're not sitting back and saying you know, what do I do with this now? It's, it's, I just lost money on this. And well, he said, or she said it was good. Uh, and uh, then you just don't know what to do with it. So it's, it's easy to exit and not wait for somebody else to tell you when you have your own analysis that tells you when you are wrong. That can be based on several different ways that you do your risk uh, risk parameters, whether it be amount of mo money loss on a trade or uh, it be uh, a specific percentage loss or something like that. But it's still, there has to be something that tells you you're wrong. And it might just be a chart point that says you're wrong. You know, that you put it, that you put in on the charts with an alert or something that tells you, okay, it's time to get out. I'm not waiting for anybody to tell me because I want to control the losing side of my trade. So, that's why it's so important. And the next thing is that exit should be determined by you. Even if the person you got the trading idea from says it's time to exit, maybe it's not. Maybe, you know, your analysis says, well, my trade objective is at a, a, a much different level, and I think there's much more profit potential than this. And I'm going to determine how I'm going to handle it and not wait for uh, or not act on somebody else's uh, opinion. I want to make sure that my analysis uh, tells me that uh, I that this is the time to exit or there's more in there uh, and wait it out. When you exit, it should be within your own risk parameters. And if it's a loss, so in other words, if you exit within your loss parameter that we talked about based on a percentage or based on a dollar amount or something, you can celebrate it and celebrate losing is one of the real keys to being a long-term successful trader because you did it correctly and you can then move on. So, you know, you, you might be listening to, a, uh, to somebody out there who's a professional and says, boy, I got this wrong. And you can hear them lamenting about it and uh, hear them going through their own emotional peace around that. You don't want to get hooked into that. You simply want to just say, I got out, I got out the right way, and uh, there is uh, no reason for anything, any looking back other than what I can learn out of this, and uh, I'm happy that I lost the money the right way and uh, move on to the next trade. That, and you know how many times I talk about making your winning trades bigger than your losers and having more winners than losers? This one right over here will help you so much with that because you're going to exit on your own risk parameters within your own rules and uh, then there is uh, no looking back at it at all. And the last one is don't be a victim by blaming. Don't blame the markets for getting it wrong because then you're turning over your power. You're turning over your decision making to the markets. Don't do that with people either because you're essentially turning your power over to them uh, by being a victim, by blaming them. You hear yourself blaming uh, or you feel the emotions coming up or uh, of anger or shame around uh, yourself about the decisions that you made, uh, then you're just simply surrendering power over to the market 
and you're in going to be in a victim place. And it's very hard to be uh, successful when you are in a victim place. So that is my nine tips uh, to help you take ownership of your own trades. Uh, remember, you know, even the best traders out there are going to be wrong 30, 40, 50 percent of the time. I know great traders that were wrong 55 percent of the time but still made a ton of money uh, because of their ability to uh, maximize trades. Um, my philosophy is only to share trading ideas. Uh, I don't ever give exact entries. Uh, I don't give prices. I always give zones and I never give exits. I uh, to me, uh, what I want to do is I want to foster the learning of people uh, by encouraging them to take ownerships of, uh, ownership of their own trades. That's essentially why I decided to do this piece today uh, because you know I hear from people and see that there, it goes on often and they don't do that. And I know that that is uh, essentially going to um, set up a lot of, uh, of risk for them if they're not taking responsibility and ownership of their own trades. Um, if you do and you you know listen to these tips and you can embody some of them, uh, it will accelerate your learning process because it will be you making your own decisions, you doing your own learning, you staying on top of all the trades and uh, then uh, being totally uh, self-reliant uh, and uh, trusting that you can make your own decisions. You know, there's a lot of confidence building in losing money. I know that's hard to, to, to make sense out of, but when you lose money the right way, when you follow your plan and you have faith that doing that brings you success, then even losing money on your own, on your own decisions, there's a benefit to that. So. Um, if uh, uh, if you um, you know embody these tips and you really um, can um, move forward by completely making your own decisions, then I think it's going to go a long way and bring faster success. Um, so listen to me, <laughs> as I urge you to listen to yourself, um, and then if you do that, then confidence and success will be yours. That is. Uh, today's style, strategy, and plan. Uh, hope that benefited you, and uh, I'll see you in the next segment.